Um, are you guys ready? For, are, you, are you awake enough for a riddle this morning? Brains sure. engaged yeah. enough? All right. All right. So you're trying to figure out who 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 this is. Now remember, this this may not be a person. All right. There's your hint, but we'll personify this thing. I have no respect for justice. I maim without killing. I break hearts and ruin lives. It's not your last boyfriend, all right? <laughs> um, just a hint. I am cruel and malicious, and I gather strength with age. The more I am quoted, the more I am believed. I flourish at every level of society. My victims are helpless. They cannot protect themselves against me because I have no name and no face. To track me down is impossible. The harder you try, the more elusive I become. I'm nobody's friend. Once I tarnish a reputation, it's never the same. I topple governments and ruin marriages. I can destroy careers and cause heartache and sleepless nights. I wreck churches and I separate Christians. I spawn suspicion and I generate grief. I make innocent people cry. Who am I? Yes. Words. Words, but more specifically, Davis? The tongue. The tongue, but more specifically, I'm going to go back over here, Shannon. Gossip. All right. So all of you are sort of on the right track, but we're talking this morning about gossip. So obviously we're talking about something that, that you've never done, but oh, anyway, we'll just leave that. Lying I'm lying again. Gossip is a very deadly sin. Gossip has destroyed more people, tarnished more reputations, broken more friendships, and split more churches probably than any other sin. And it's something that we've all dealt with, we've all experienced. And so when we talk about gossip, it's something we have common ground in because all of us experienced gossip. We, we've all been probably gossiped about and probably all of us have what? We've participated in in gossip. Gossip is what? It's quickly told, quickly heard, quickly spread, and quickly believed. Gossip is quickly told, quickly heard, quickly spread, and quickly believed. Now, when it comes to, to gossip, you know, there, there are certain sins that, that we kind of easily will confess to. We'll own up to it. We'll admit it. But when it comes to gossip, it's one of those things that we really don't like to admit that maybe we too have participated in it. But we've all been there. And it usually kind of goes something like this. Did you hear what she said? No. No, I, I, I didn't. Tell me. Well, just between you and me, right? Has anyone ever said that to you? Just between you and me, I heard that and then the conversation goes on. We've all experienced it. We've all participated in it. We've all felt the sting and the pain of gossip. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And when we think about the subject of gossip, certainly gossip has the power to bring death, to bring destruction. And so we're going to look this morning at what God has to say about this. But before we do that, I just want to think, what is it? What does it mean? How do we define what a gossiper is? What does it mean to, to gossip? A gossiper is a person who likes talking about other people's private lives, who likes sharing privileged information that they have that they want to share not to be a benefit or a blessing, but to put someone else down, to tarnish their reputation in the eyes and the mind of those that they are sharing their information with. Now, gossip is different than just sharing information, right? And it kind of comes down to two things. Number one, intent. Intent, gossipers have the goal of building themselves up by making others look bad and by exalting themselves as some kind of treasury of knowledge. I've got some secret info. I've got the inside scoop and I want to let you in on it. Number two, it's the type of information shared. Gossipers like to speak of the faults and the failings of others, revealing potentially embarrassing or shameful details regarding the lives of others without their knowledge or their approval. And it's quickly told quickly heard, quickly spread, and sadly, quickly believed. Now, how many of you would just say, I felt, I have personally felt the pain of gossip. All right, been hurt by gossip. All right, it's something that there's this commonality. We've all experienced this. this is a really, really common thing that we all deal with. And here's the thing, we all might have an opinion about gossip, 
right? We, we might have an opinion whether we like it or don't like it, when we think it's appropriate, when we think it's not appropriate, but I don't want us to, to consider our opinions about gossip this morning, but the, the main thing is what does God think about gossip? What, what is his perspective on it? What does he have to say about it? Because we've learned this, this week that our mouths are powerful, death and life from the power of the tongue, incredibly hard to control, right? And God wants to bring our tongue under his control and he wants to intersect our lives in such a way that we talk differently. And part of that is dealing with this issue of gossip. Jesus said, I tell you that men will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted and by your words you will be condemned. And when it comes to gossip, God's word has a lot to say. In Romans chapter 1, uh, as Paul is writing to the church, in, in chapter 1, he, he's writing, and in, in the middle of that chapter, he makes a case for the depravity of, of mankind, for the fact that mankind has rebelled against God in so many different ways. And in verses 29 and 30, in Romans chapter 1, Paul, uh, writing about the rebellion that we have in our hearts towards God. And, and basically he's setting up his reader to realize that they too have this same rebellious heart and apart from the gospel they are hopelessly lost. But it's sort of interesting the things that he mentions. But just look at verse 28. He said, And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. And they were filled with all manner of unrighteousness. And then he goes on to describe this unrighteous, this ungodly, this sinful behavior. And he says, They were filled with evil, with covetousness, with malice. They were full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness, they are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents. We're not even going to go there today, um, but we could. Foolish, faithless, heartless, and ruthless. And though they know God's righteous decree, those who practice these things deserve to die. Not only do they do them, but they give approval to those who practice them. And so as we look at this passage, it's, it's sort of interesting because there's a whole bunch of what we would consider serious sins mentioned there, right? Just it, from your perspective, what's a serious sin? All right, just throw something out there. What, what would you classify as a serious sin? Murder. Murder. All right. I think there's something we can all agree on. We're all Sixth Commandment sort of people, right? Are you... You know, the sixth commandment is what you always want others to practice, right? Um, thou shalt not kill. Um, you with me? You guys are a little sleepy this morning. Help me out here. I'm sleepy too, but it's better when we're all awake. All right, what's some other ser what's something else? You serious sin? Adultery. Adultery. All right. We definitely would say that's a serious sin. Anybody else? Gossip. Gossip. All right. How, how many of you, you know, when we think about the big sins, the serious sins, gossip may not be the first thing that comes to our mind. But I think it's pretty interesting here that, that as Paul's mentioning sort of some of these sins that, that describe the rebellion of man's heart, murder, sexual immorality, envy, uh, these things, he includes gossip. He includes gossip. And the word he uses for gossip literally means a whisperer, a secret slanderer, a detractor. And then he uses the word slander, which means an evil speaker or one who defames. And to defame means to damage the reputation of someone. And so, right in this middle of this passage, God is talking about our rebellion and our unrighteousness. And so we get a picture of God's perspective on gossip. All right, gossip is something that God hates. All right, hate's a strong word, but it describes how God feels about all sin. And so when it comes to gossip, God hates gossip. And if you and I love God, if we've been brought into a relationship with God through Christ, we've experienced His love, and now having received and experienced His love, we love Him, right? Because He first loved us. And if we love God, then we should love what He loves and what? Hate what He hates. And God hates sin. He hates gossip. And so when we think about how we're going to deal with gossip, the first thing we have to do is adopt God's mindset, God's perspective on our gossip. We've all felt its effects. We've all been hurt. But the strange thing about gossip is even though that all of us probably would admit that somewhere along our journey we've been hurt by gossip, all of us would probably have to admit that we also have what? 
participated. And isn't that strange? Like, if you step back and think, why is it that we have this tendency to participate in the very thing that we know has hurt and wounded us? Why is it that we have this tendency to quickly inflict the same pain on others that we ourselves have so cruelly endured? Solomon gives us some insight on this. So, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 8, helps us to understand ourselves. And it says in Proverbs 18, 8, The words of a gossip are like choice morsels, and they go down to the inmost parts. What's he saying? He's saying there's something about gossip that's so appealing and enjoyable on the front end that it, it often causes us to be unexplainably attracted to it. And I, and I kind of like this illustration. He says it's like choice morsels. It probably wasn't the eggs at breakfast, all right? I, I understand that. They do the job, but they're probably not the most amazing thing that you've ever ate. But just think about what the most amazing thing that you ever ate. Now, imagine that I have that thing on a platter, right, right now, and I'm walking around with it. And, and if I got close to you, would you be able to resist it? How many of you say I'd be able to resist it? All right, no one. You would, Eddie? Oh, wow. It's not yours. All right. <laughs> but say I offered it to you. Would you take it? That's this picture that he's painting there. He says, gossip is like these tasty morsels of irresistible food that are being served up to us on a platter. And so we are unexplainably drawn to it because on the front end, there's something about gossip that appeals to us. And that's why gossip is so popular, right? There, there are gossip magazines, right, that you can buy. There are gossip websites, right? I mean, gossip is, is a multi-million dollar industry, I mean, think about that. Why? Because we are drawn toward it. It sells. We're suckers for those choice morsels. And I mean, you think about like gossip, of, like celebrity gossip and all these things. It doesn't make any sense. Like why in the world would we even care about details of people's lives that we've never known, never met, never will meet, right? And yet all of a sudden we're, we're fascinated by these details of their lives about some scandalous thing that happened or some problem that they have in their life and all of a sudden we want to tear them down and defame them and detract them. And as a society, as a culture, we are enamored with that. I mean, we can't wait to tear each other down. We can't wait to find out something about someone to make ourselves feel better and to tear them down. Now, gossip about someone you don't know is one thing and it's still sin, but it doesn't stop there, does it? We gossip about even the people that we know and even the people that we say that we care about. We talk behind their backs. We we share information. And we almost always share that information in a way that causes us to think less of that person and to, to cause the person that we're speaking to to think less of that person. He says, these things make a man unclean. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and then there's that thing, slander, tearing someone else down with your words. Gossip is just doing slander behind their back. And so gossip comes from our heart. It comes from a heart that's often unsettled, a heart that's not content. A heart that might be insecure. A heart that might be wounded. Sometimes we gossip because we ourselves have been hurt. Sometimes we gossip because we believe that pulling someone else down will fix me or my problem or my insecurity. But ultimately, gossip comes from a heart that fails to find its significance and its satisfaction in Christ. See, ultimately, when we're gossiping and we're taking these choice morsels and we're ingesting them and we're participating in this thing that that we know is wrong and we know has even hurt us, but we're sort of unexplainably drawn to it and it's just really, really hard to resist, it comes from a heart that fails to find its significance and its satisfaction in Christ. But it's an illusion. Because gossip destroys. Gossip is a deadly sin. And gossip doesn't just destroy the one whom you're gossiping about. And it will. It could absolutely wound them in a devastating way when they find out. And maybe you know exactly what that feels like. But I want you to know that re- this morning that, that sin also has an effect on our own hearts and our own lives. Like when we sin, it's not just something we do or we don't do. It's an act of rebellion against God. And sin is powerful. Sin opens us up to, to Satan's work in our life. And so sin is destructive. Gossip is destructive, not just to those that we talk about, but to ourselves. And listen to some of the things that, that Solomon says 
about gossip. First of all, he says, The mouths of fools are their undoing, and their lips are a snare to their very lives. All right, our words are powerful. And he says, The mouth of a fool is their undoing, their lips a snare to their very life. All right. Words, your words, have the ability not only to hurt others, but yourself. Proverbs eleven twelve. Those who have no sense deride their neighbors, but those who have understanding hold their tongues. For gossips betray a confidence, but the trustworthy keep a secret. See, gossip will impact your relationships with people. It will tear down a relationship almost quicker than anything else. Proverbs sixteen twenty seven. Scoundrels plot evil, and on their lips it is like a scorching fire. The perverse stir up dissension, and gossip separates close friends. Gossip has the power to destroy. And gossip is something that God takes seriously. God hates it. It's sin. All right? But for whatever reason, we are unexplainably drawn to it. And so what can we do? What do we do about gossip? How do we deal with this destructive sin? It's destroyed more people, tarnished more reputations, broken more friendships. And split more churches, probably than almost any other sin. So what do we do? I've got three things for you this morning. First of all, if you're an active gossiper, if you'd be really honest this morning with yourself and with God, and that's my heart this morning, is that we would just be honest and real. Listen, God already knows. But when we come to a place where we are honest with ourselves and honest with God, we position ourselves where He can work in our lives. And so if you're an active gossiper, if if, if gossip is something that you are participating in on a regular basis, I want you to realize the seriousness of your sin. To to realize that, that you are dealing with and you are playing with something that's far more powerful and far more destructive than you ever could realize. Not only does it have the ability to inflict deep wounds and deep hurt in the life of that one that you're gossiping about, but it's going to bring destruction into your own life. It's going to bring pain and heartache into your own life. And so you need to deal with your heart. What is it? What's going on in your heart that's causing you to participate in this gossip? What is it in your heart? Is there something that you feel is missing? Is there something that's unsettled? Have you been hurt? What is it in your heart? And and I want you to ask yourself that question and be honest with that question. And maybe even just take some time today to think about that and to ask God, say, God, what is it in my heart that's causing me to choose to want to tear down others, to belittle, to injure? And you might want to ask yourself this, why, why am I so consumed with other people's lives? Why is it that I have this great inordinate affection about their life and their private life and what's going on? Not because I care about them or want to help them, but because I want to tear them down. And then ask God to forgive you. All right, Realize that, that gossip is sin. It's rebellion in your heart against God, and it needs to be confessed, and it needs to be dealt with. But here's the amazing thing about God. He's always willing to forgive us. Jesus paid for that sin on the cross. He shed his blood to cover the sin of your gossip, and he is willing and waiting to forgive you. He wants to set you free from this destructive pattern of sin. So ask him to forgive you, and ask him to help you to live for what matters. So we just can't replace a behavior in our life. We, we can't just stop a behavior in our life. Rather, we need to replace it. And so what, what helps us replace this tendency for gossip? It's to be consumed with living for what matters. I'm here. You're here to live for God's glory. If you've been called into God's kingdom through the gospel, through faith in Christ, you've been called to live in and for the kingdom of God, to live for His glory, to serve His purposes. That's why you're here. That's the purpose of life. And so become consumed with your purpose. And when you become consumed with your purpose, that I'm here to glorify God, I'm here to honor Him, I'm here to serve Him, I'm here to represent Him, it will help me break my tendency towards gossip. Because now, instead of wanting to tear other people down, or make other people look small and myself look big, I want to make God look big and I want to make myself look small, and so I don't want to tear down others through gossip. Ask Him to help you live for what matters. Ask God to help you guard your mouth. Say, God, make me aware. Because like, sometimes, all of a sudden, you ever realize, maybe you can identify this, all of a sudden you realized you were participating in gossip, but it, you, you didn't even realize you were doing it. Anybody ever been there? Right? It's, it can be, sin is so deceptive so many times. So ask God, say, God, guard my mouth. Proverbs 21, 23 says, Those who guard their mouths and, keep their, and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. Those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. I don't know about you, but I would like to avoid 
unnecessary calamity. Are you with me? All right, life is going to have enough problems. There's going to be enough pain, enough trouble. And God often ordains and allows us to go through difficult things. But sometimes we make life way more difficult than it has to be because of our actions and the consequences that we reap from those actions. And so if you're an active gossiper, I want you to realize it's serious. It's sin. And you need to confess it. And not only do you need to confess it to God, but you may need to ask forgiveness from the one that you've hurt. Right? Right? Because God wants us to get right with Him vertically, but He also wants to make sure that we are in right relationship with each other horizontally. Right? We're His family. We're His bride. We're His people. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we need to deal with each other and ask for forgiveness. Number two, don't be an ear for gossip. All right? And this is something for all of us. Every single one of us need to take this to heart. Let gossip stop with you. All right, refuse to listen to it. When someone comes to you and they, they give you the whole just between you and me thing and, and you think, mm, I'd sure like to hear this, right? We, we all like a secret. We all, we all want in on a secret. There's something tantalizing about secrets. I mean, my kids are three and five and, and they love secrets, right? You know, let me tell you a secret, right? And I'll just whisper I love you or something like that into their ear. But they just, they're enamored with a secret. And sometimes we are as well, aren't we? And so refuse to listen. Be polite, be firm, but refuse to listen. Proverbs 26, 20 says, Without wood, a fire goes out. When, without gossip, a quarrel dies down. And so you and I can stop gossip in our lives by refusing to listen. A gossip, Proverbs 29, Proverbs 20, verse 19 says, A gossip betrays a confidence, so avoid anyone who talks too much. All right, good advice. He says, basically, if you're dealing with someone and they're constantly gossiping, they're constantly participating in things, he says, you may have to eventually just avoid them. So I want to challenge you, avoid gossip. Don't be an ear for gossip. Don't participate in that. You don't have to be mean or rude about it, but just say, you know, uh, I'd rather not know that. I'd rather not hear that. I'd rather you talk to that person about it and not to me about it. Right? You don't have to be rude. You don't have to be mean. You don't have to be self-righteous. You don't have to act like you're better than them. But just refuse to listen. And here's something else I would say. Don't participate in the culture of celebrity gossip. Gossip magazines, gossip websites. Because you're just feeding your sinful desire for gossip. Just don't participate in it. Live differently than the culture. Live the way God calls us to live. Don't feed that desire for gossip. And number three, if you've been hurt by gossip. And we've already kind of touched on this and addressed this, but I just want to speak very specifically to that. You might be here this morning, and for you, maybe the, the pain of gossip is very fresh and very real. Maybe it's very current, and you've been hurt by what somebody said about you to somebody else. And of course, when we give the whole just between you and me, it, it's never what? Just between you and me, is it? Why? Because gossip is what? It's quickly told. It's quickly heard. It's quickly believed. And it's what? quickly spread. Just between you and me, right? What's Emily probably going to do? She's going to go to someone else and say, hey, just between you and me, I heard. Right? Now don't tell anyone else. And then that person's going to what? They're going to go to two or three people and say, hey, just between you and me, now don't tell anyone. Right? You've all experienced that, right? So gossip is quickly spread. And maybe you've gotten hurt, you've gotten hurt because of gossip. And your heart is hurting this morning. Well, here's a, a few things. I want you to realize that forgiveness is the way to find healing and freedom. And forgiveness is not saying that what happened to you wasn't wrong. It's not saying that it didn't hurt. But it's saying, I am willing, based on the fact that God has forgiven me of all my sin, that I am going to put this situation in God's hands. And I'm going to trust that my Father in Heaven can deal with this situation. And so I am going to choose to forgive. All right, it's not saying that what they did was wrong, right. It's not saying it didn't hurt. It's not saying that it doesn't matter. But what you're saying is, I'm not going to seek payback. I'm not going to carry this around anymore. I'm going to let God heal my heart. I'm going to put that person in God's hands and trust that He will deal with them according to His will and His plan. Forgiveness is the path to healing. And so maybe this morning there's somebody that you need to forgive. In your heart, maybe you even need to tell them. Maybe it's when you go home. You need to say, you know, what you said really hurt me. And it's very hard, but I want to forgive you. 
and I want you to know that I have forgiven you. God alone can heal you and can set you free. Vengeance belongs to God. Right? When we're hurt, a lot of times what do we want to do? What's your instinct when you're hurt? Hurt back. All right, that is wired within us. When we're hurt, we want to hurt back. We want to settle the score. And usually we don't even want to just settle the score, right? We want to, settle, we want to even things up and then a little payback, right? A little extra just to let someone know how much you hurt. And listen, I understand that's the natural reaction of the human heart, right? That's our natural response. But as God's children, God wants us to have a supernatural response. Right? It takes God's power within you to forgive. Don't try to do it in your own strength. Say, God, I, I've been hurt. I've been really deeply hurt. And God, I need you to heal that hurt, but I want you to help me to forgive that person because not forgiving them will not heal your hurt. It will only cause that hurt to deepen. So forgive. And let God set you free. When it comes to gossip, all of us have a choice. We can participate we can listen, or we can let God have control of this area of our hearts and our life. And so, I want you to realize this morning how destructive and deadly gossip is. And I want you to just be honest with yourself and say, is this something that I've been part of? Is this something that I've been participating in? And if it is, confess that to your father this morning. Let him know that you realize that, that what you've done is rebellion against him. Ask him to forgive you and ask him to help you chart a new course, to go a new direction, to live differently, to talk differently. Because gossip will destroy others, but it will also destroy you. And I don't want you to live that way. I want you to live differently. God wants you to live differently. His way is better. And so use your words to build up rather than to tear down. Would you bow your heads this morning? Just before we, we move on to uh, a day full of activity, of, of learning, of playing, of growing, let's just let God in this moment deal with our hearts. And so it's my desire right now just to say, is gossip something that maybe I didn't even realize it, but I've gotten pretty deep into it? Maybe it's because there's some hurt in your heart. And you've been hurting back. Maybe it's because you feel insecure. Maybe it's because you feel like if I, if I gossip about others, I'll feel better about myself. And I want you to know your worth and your identity, your value come from Christ and Christ alone. But how many of you just say, you know, with no one looking around, just say, you know what, gossip's been something I've struggled with. Either I've been doing it or I've been in ear for it. And I realize that and, and I want to go a different direction. Would you raise your hand just so I can pray for you? Just be honest. Thank you so much. It takes a lot of courage to be honest, but God loves it when we're honest with Him. All right, God loves our honesty because when we are honest, then He can work in our heart. If that's you today, I just, just let God deal with your heart. Let me pray for you right now. Father, I pray for, for all of us this morning, but I pray for specifically for those who had just had the courage to raise their hand and say, hey, this is something I'm really struggling with. Father, I pray that that you would lead each of them and each of us, Father, to repent, to acknowledge before you that we recognize that what we have been doing is sin, that it's rebellion in our hearts against you. And Father, I pray that they would know and experience the forgiveness that you offer. Father, may they know that you forgive completely and freely and fully. Father, I pray that they would know the joy of your forgiveness. And Father, if they need to have a conversation with someone to ask for their forgiveness as well, give them the courage to do that. And bring healing to relationships. Restore, Father, what's been brought down. And Father, I pray for all of us that we would learn not to be an ear for gossip, not to listen. And Father, I pray for those who have been hurt. Father, I just pray that you would heal their hearts. Father, I pray that you'd give them the power to forgive. I pray that you would reassure them of your, the value and the worth that they have in your eyes. And Father, I pray that you would help them to just trust that situation to you, knowing that you will deal with it and to rest fully in your love. Help them to forgive. Father, help us all to glorify you in what we say and what we do. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.